Hello, Namaste. This is Dr. Ravi Kiran Barikala. I'm an infectious disease specialist at Apollo Hospital, Hyderabad. Today we will be talking about dengue fever and how different age groups are affected by dengue fever. Like from children, teenagers, adults, or even older adults. Each group may have a different manifestation of dengue. So we will be talking to different people about how is this presenting in their age group so that they can understand it better and take care of themselves in a better way. Thank you. Hello, doctor. Today I have few questions uh, for you about dengue fever. My first question is, what is dengue fever? So Bhuvan, as you were talking about dengue, you know, dengue can cause all these symptoms that I just explained to you, but still you have to eat well, drink well, and you have to take a lot of rest. Uh, you can lot, watch a lot of videos or whatever, but try to take rest and eat well. Sometimes, if the fever is too high, we will give you some medicines, your parents will give you some medicines to take that. And we will also have to do some blood tests. I know you don't like blood tests, it yeah. might hurt, but it's a small, simple blood test. We'll just take a little bit of blood, we'll check. You must have heard about different cells in the body. There's a cell yeah. called platelets. So in dengue, the platelets become low. So if it becomes too low, we may have to do some other medicines or give you some platelets. Okay. So f to know that, we will do some blood tests. We'll make sure that you won't hurt too much. And as you're feeling better, we'll give you some medicines and slowly wean it off. It won't last for many days. It will just be a few days. Doctor, I have a doubt. Is it uh, pronounced as uh, dengue or dengue? That's a good question, Bhuvan. So the actual term is dengue, not dengue. It's better that we call it dengue. Many people call it dengue and different countries say it differently, but the actual medical way that we would call it is dengue. Okay, hope that helps. How can one get affected by dengue? So dengue, we can get it by the bite of a mosquito called Aedes aegypti. So it's a special type of mosquito. It has like black and white stripes, especially on its legs and on some parts on its body. So if it bites somebody, let's say I have dengue and a mosquito comes and bites me and then it goes and bites you then you can get it so that is how it spreads from one person to another it won't spread by just sitting next to me it doesn't spread by coughing or by sharing food that's not how it spreads but only by a mosquito bite so if you can get rid of mosquitoes we can get rid of dengue one of my friend got affected by dengue how long it will take him to recover so I'm sorry, one of your friends is affected, Bhuvan. Uh, unfortunately, uh, some people do get dengue, but fortunately, it's a very simple disease and it will get resolved very soon. For most people, it takes about three to five days, maybe a week. Rarely, it might take up to two weeks, but most people will get better within a few days, especially the fevers will come down and the weakness will go away and you'll start feeling a little better after a few days, okay? Hello, Namaste Doctor. Uh, I am Jasmine and today I have few questions on dengue fever. Hello Jasmine. So Doctor, which type of mosquitoes causes dengue fever? So that's a good question. There's lots of different kinds of mosquitoes out there because there are some mosquitoes which cause malaria, some mosquitoes cause dengue. So dengue fever mosquitoes are a little typical in which they have like black and white spots, especially on their legs, you know, those legs that kind of stick out on that you have alternating white and black spots and then some spots on the body also some white and black spots and that's how you can probably know uh, but it is impossible to clearly know which one is which uh, we're not really doing testings on each mosquito to figure it out so doctor is it limited to a specific mosquito gender yes jasmine only the female uh, egypt edes egypti mosquito can cause dengue and that's the only form that can transmit from one to another. So what are the different types of dengue fever? So that's a good question Jasmine. There are mainly two types of dengue. One is just more of a simple type and more of a severe dengue type. The simple types um, don't need any hospitalization, can be taken care of with simple medication for this severe type or a dengue hemorrhagic fever which we call it as. This can be a more severe type and can cause serious problems like with bleeding, bleeding into your body, inside your some organs, inside your brain. So that can be a very fatal form. 
Um, there are some other zero types also of dengue, which some people may get it. It's not widely prevalent, but there are several different types. It depends upon the types of different viruses. Hi, doctor. I'm Shanti, and I'm a working mother. I have a ten-year-old child, and uh, since the dengue fe season is in uh, is coming, so I just wanted to understand how do we take care of our children, keep them safe. Hello Shanti, thank you for asking that question. It's a very important question. We need to keep ourselves safe and our family safe, especially our children safe. We are all worried about our children more than ourselves. So there are a few measures that we can take to keep ourselves and our family safe, even children. Is first to prevent mosquito bites. How can we prevent a mosquito bite? One of the most important ways is to prevent any water logging anywhere close to our house. So if you have any small plants, uh, pots, which there is water collecting or some of the AC, uh, it drips and it collects the water collects somewhere. So make sure that there is no water logging anywhere. Even if there are any like mugs or buckets anywhere in your balcony, water might get collected there. So make sure that is all dumped away very frequently. And if you have any water bodies around your house, maybe lakes or anything else, uh, not you can do maybe individually, but as a society or uh, as a community, you can petition to um, keep that area clean uh, and uh, keep it covered as much as possible so that mosquitoes will not breed and come and attack us. Other ways also is to prevent uh, us from getting mosquito bites. We can have uh, mosquito screens on all our doors and windows and make sure that doors and windows are closed, especially after it starts getting dark. Maybe after five or six, if we keep the doors and windows closed, mosquitoes will not enter. Another way is if you are going out after that time, make sure you wear long sleeve clothes mm -hmm. and even use mosquito repellents on your skin so that mosquitoes will not bite. Inside our house, we also have this other mosquito repellents, which are like plug-in mosquito repellents. You can put it into electric sockets. That way, at least somewhat the mosquito will not bite us. Fans might also help if you put it on high, mosquitoes may not bite you. So some simple measures we can take to prevent mosquito bites and that will go a long way in preventing dengue. Uh, my uh, friend recently delivered a baby girl and uh, she is breastfeeding her. So do best breastfeeding mothers uh, should take extra precautions uh, in this dengue season? So breastfeeding mothers can be at a higher risk for dengue just because they are just recovering, even pregnant ladies can be at a higher risk. So first things, make sure that they do not get a mosquito bite. If they do get a mosquito bite and they are having any fevers, please get tested right away. Just by symptoms, we may not know whether it's dengue or something else. So better get a test first and monitor the platelets very well because we have seen some uh, young women, especially pregnant and breastfeeding mothers, get very sick because of dengue. So we have to make sure that they don't get sick and there are some simple tests that we can do to measure especially their platelet counts and also just measure how much uh, intake that they're having, fluids and food and make sure that they're well balanced, well hydrated and they will not get sick. Doctor, I have just one last question. My daughter wants to go for swimming because it's summer and uh, in the summer camp they have swimming. Mm -hmm. So is it a does she have to take any additional precautions? That's a good question. So there's not special precautions that we need to take for just swimming classes, swimming lessons, because uh, mosquitoes don't really go inside the water. And it's a, such a big pool of water, that water is well cleaned. So there is not much mosquito breeding at that time. You may have to take care if she's doing it maybe later in the evening time and it's starting to get dark and it's an open time. Once they come out of the water, and their body is exposed, that time they can get mosquito bites. So if they can prevent that, I think they are safe from mosquito bites and from dengue. Hello, Dr. Namaste. Hello. My name is Sanjay. I have few questions on dengue fever. So doctor, my first question is, do people with dengue have to quarantine themselves? And can they self-medicate? Hello, sir. That's a good question to ask about uh, dengue. And they don't need to be quarantined like what we talk about quarantine for a COVID patients. We do not need to quarantine a dengue patient. Dengue is not spread from one person to another just by contact or by air or by droplets or by touching anything surfaces. Okay, it's spread only by mosquitoes. So we don't need any quarantine. 
and of course for self medication we never re recommend self medications for any situations but especially for dengue dengue is something which can become very serious and you may not necessarily even know whether it's dengue or if it's a severe dengue and without knowing that you may not do correct treatment and even when you find out it may be too late sometimes so we should not do that so it's better that you first consult a doctor a doctor will prescribe tests as required and they will give you some medicines that would be a better way of doing it so doctor they talk about you know um, preventing dengue by using uh, you know mosquito repellents are they do they cause any reaction in hum, uh, in humans or you know to the people who are using them uh, that's a good question sir there's lots of concerns with mosquito repellents now but fortunately the most of the mosquito repellents that we use at least the plug in types which we plug into the electric sockets they're pretty safe there's lots of studies done on them and nothing has been shown to cause any like harmful effects like cancer or something else so it's pretty safe there are other types of mosquito repellents which are more fume based which like a coil based so you put a coil and you put it on fire and then it just smokes fills the air those types may be a little bit dangerous okay they may cause some problems especially long term problems people especially like asthma or any people who have lung disease if you're inhaling that fumes that might irritate your lungs and okay. cause breathing problems and some mosquito repellents that we put on the skin that may also cause some irritation to the skin because some people have sensitive skin they may have problems to the skin because of that doctor i have a concern i am diabetic is dengue more dangerous for people with diabetes or are they susceptible are they at higher risk for dengue so people with diabetes and hypertension they have a lots of other risk factors but dengue by itself is not necessarily a risk factor for them although you do have to be careful a lot of people who have diabetes hypertension may be taking some blood thinners also like aspirin yes to prevent any heart disease or they may be heart patient already and they may have stents so they may have some things to prevent blocks in their hearts yes. those medicines makes the blood a little bit more thin so when dengue comes and your platelet level drops it's like a double injury to your okay. bleeding so they may have a more bleeding risk okay and other complications with dengue or heart plush heart patients or bp patients could be their immunity may be slightly lower than other people so they might fall sicker okay. they might need hospitalization a little bit more frequently than some people who are more healthy without any problem like diabetes patients uh they may have to eat correctly on time yes and uh, with dengue their appetite goes down they may have vomiting okay because of that their sugar levels might drop yes or they may not be able to take their medicines properly okay if they are not taking medicines sugars will go up yes or bp will go up yes. and that may be a problem so for those reasons we have to be a little bit more careful with bp and sugar patients